Hello everybody, it is S Monty Gaming and we're here with Astroneer. This is going to be a little quick start guide, sort of tutorial to your first playthrough of Astroneer. I'll kind of um, go through some of the basics and get you started. This is patch 0 0.8.0 .0, and um, first thing you're going to want to do is obviously choose the astronaut with which with whom you identify most. This guy looks good. He seems to share the same ideals as me. Take it in though, it's a beautiful start. Um, this is probably the toughest part, um, the toughest on your system is this initial crash landing, but you know what? This is your new home, enjoy it. You can kind of look around. Wow, we've got some pretty interesting stuff nearby. Um, but this is a quick start guide, so we're gonna, just stick to the basics. Okay, now that we are out of the drop pod and the exo habitat is completed, completely set up, this is our base of operations. WASD will get you moving around. Um, holding right click and panning the mouse will be your your camera view. Uh, Q will open your inventory. You've got a number of slots right in front of you. There are two up top as well. If you hit E, it brings out your terrain tool, which also has slots on it um we'll get more into that as we as need be but first let's do our first task here we're gonna move over to the landing pad highlight so it's important to make sure you're highlighting the control panel for whatever you're trying to interact with hold q to examine and initiate the cargo drop first two things we will start with are a medium platform and a medium fabricator so we're going to want to set up a platform Click and move it to somewhere, you know, somewhere near the base. Actually, we're going to place it right here. Now, don't stress. Z and X will uh, rotate it. Don't stress because once you place it down, you can still pick it right back up and move it again. And it's not even unpacked yet. So what we'll do is highlight it, hit E, and boom, it's unpacked. Uh, the reason we kept it close to the um, habitat is because we can plug it in. Every platform will need power to run whatever is placed on top, the module. So this is our medium fabricator. We've placed it on top and we've unpacked it. Now it's worth noting once items are unpacked, they can't be repacked. Secondly, when an item is plugged in, a module or a uh, platform, you cannot move it. So unplugging it will allow you to move the module. If you don't like where it's placed, you could rotate it. Um, so. That's eh, something worth noting. Actually, you can move the fabricator once it's placed to place it on another platform, but platforms themselves will need to be unplugged. Now, first order of business, let's get your research up and running and get some sort of power generation going because you're going to need to smelt ore. Um, but that's a little ahead of ourselves. We're going to want to collect compound and resin. The reason we're going to want resin is because if we hold Q to get the fabricator going. We we want to be able to create a large platform. The reason we need a large platform is because we want to get our research chamber. Our research chamber is gonna be an integral part to playing the game. So two compound will create that and two resin will create the large platform. Looking around, um, I think we saw, if you can see right here, these spherical gray stones over here are compound. Uh, resin is more of a orange or well more of a uh, I don't know a brownish beigeish color. I don't see any nearby but we're gonna look around. So first thing we're gonna do is collect some compound. Let's do that. As you'll notice oh E first I'll, I'll I'm jumping ahead of ourselves. First thing you want to do is hit E bring out your terrain tool. You'll see the cursor change. Um, clicking will deform the terrain and collect any ore that is underneath it. So right now we're just going to kind of go in a circular pattern here until all the compound is done. As you collect it, you'll get an audio cue letting you know that you've completely, well, you've completed a one unit of said resource. Because if you look, it's hard to see, but the back of the gun sort of, um, you'll see, I'll, I'll pull it up. The back of the gun will show you how far you are along to the next unit of the resource. Now, as you can tell the, the by the warnings and the blue bar at the top of our backpack, we are at 25% oxygen. We're not going to be able to survive much longer unless we get back to the base. So the first thing we're also going to make sure we need to do is create tethers. Tethers will increase our range by quite a bit. 
Now, to create small objects, you can do it right from your backpack. There will be a bunch of, you'll, you'll kind of figure out what items are created where um, as you play the game, but just note, tethers, obviously, backpack. Now we have compound here. There are four that we have collected plus one that is in this slot over here. Now if I change to a canister which requires resin it'll kick out one of the compounds. So um, it, it could get a little confusing if you don't know where something went but um, you'll see if you go right to tethers it uses compound it'll pop in. Hit the I to craft and boom we've got some tethers. Now what can we do with these tethers? Well we're gonna have to find some compound and or some resin and it doesn't seem to appear to be any nearby so oh actually there does over here look at that lovely now as we run away we'll see that our tether breaks to continue our to continue to sort of get the um, the oxygen out to where we need to go we need to drop these these oxygen transfer tethers as you hit the maximum range of your own it will break T will drop another one. So continue to do that until you're where you need to go. We're gonna run over this way, it breaks, hit T, drop it again. Now I'm, I'm gonna also show you a little trick. So when you're picking up items off the ground and you want them to go directly in your backpack, you can hold shift and click. So um, that'll be useful for after we collect this resin and we're headed back. So let's do that. E brings out our terrain tool and here we go. A fun little collection. Okay, that about does it for the resin in this area. It looks like we were able to get three and almost a fourth. Can we find just a little, a little bit more? I don't think so. I've pretty thoroughly went through this. Ah, that stinks. Well, it doesn't matter. The game will remember how close you were to the next unit. So as you can see, it's it's not a complete unit and thus it's not in your backpack, it's on the back. So it'll remember, so the next time we're mining resin, we'll get one unit quickly. Um, sprinting back by holding shift and shift clicking the tethers to put them back in my backpack. So now we've got the resin and we've got the compound. Let's start printing. Hold Q to examine the medium fabricator, get our large platform printed. Now you'll see it's going to take a little bit of time um, and the speed at which the items get printed is based on the amount of power it has to draw. Um, you can tell when something is fully powered or how powered something is by looking at this yellow flashing indicator on the wire. And it, this is kind of like right in the middle. Um, what we'll do is actually we'll create a small generator which, which is created via compound to speed up the process and actually show us how the power indicator works if you it looks like we actually ran out of power i've never actually seen that happen <laughs> doesn't matter it completed anyway we've got our our next platform but um let's put this generator down okay so the generator actually went up into the upper slot if you'll see so you'll have things like work lights and sort of anything small can attach anywhere on your pack but um these are sort of utility slots so just remember that when you to move the generator you want to select cl click right on the base of it now watch because when you place it around you'll you'll instinctively want to select the platform but no that's not how you move it you move it via the base of the actual generator now we're going to use that to Increase the power to our printer here. Um, you'll see right now that it's not printing. It's not drawing power. You're at full You're at full power so to speak um, So let's first Let's do that. Um, and in addition we can start unpacking our large platform in preparation of the research laboratory um, Also noting you can you can transfer power through this um, to another platform from other platforms or from you know these intermediaries like a small generator uh, you can uh, you can also create extenders which are essentially just a bridge to extend your power out but you know for this it's not really required so what I'm gonna do before we create the lab I'm gonna collect some some organic matter so you'll see in, I'll, I'll show you why in a second um, we could have gotten started on the lab, but I want to show how the gener the small generator works and why it's important. Oh, while we're here, you can see this is a, a rec um, wreckage. 
Um, and what you do is all, all this, these things have some way of entering them. And this one right through the bottom, easy enough. When you get in, you'll, you'll notice that it usually has some sort of rare item or something created. Um, right here, we've got a seat. It's not going to be useful right now, but we'll just throw it on the, the platform here because it is storage. Okay, while we were doing that, we cre we, we've collected one unit of organic resource, and that'll be used to power the organic, um, this small generator. It burns the leaves, so to speak. So let's turn on the medium fabricator and get the research chamber going. So that's going, um, and you'll see that the power is now at half. If we click right on this little organic blueprint here, it'll take it right out of our backpack and place it, which is nice instead of opening your inventory. And now you can see that the generator's running and boom, we're at full power. You'll also, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that the lab is, is now being printed much quicker. Boom, there we go. So all, you can also hold E to turn off the generator because it's no longer required and thus saving some resources, but Organic matter isn't that difficult to come by. Okay, now that we have our research lab, you'll see that on the front of it, if you're looking at it from this way, you won't notice, but take a look for the module, um, the, the actual control panel. So it'll work just like the landing pad. You'll hold Q and you'll bring up um, a little interface where you can start studying resources. Now, we don't have anything to put in there right now. We could put, um, you know, some, we could put in, I'm, I'm sorry, we could put compound in here, but it's not really worth it. We're gonna have to go and find some bigger objects called artifacts, and they're located in various um, places. You may find it, if you have some trees nearby, you may find them in the trees. Um, you may find them in caves uh, underneath, uh, you know, hostile plant life. But when we get to that point, I will show you, but for now, Next goal is to get a smelter, and you'll see why shortly. Um, if you hold Q, you can see your interface for um, for research. Now, once we have uh, uh, an artifact in here and the research module turned on, you'll see a rate of some sort of bytes per minute. That'll be your research resource you use to purchase or to download the recipe. Um, for a certain item. So let's see what we're going to go for. I'm sorry. I said smelter. That's over here in the little techie looking icon. Smelter costs 500 bytes. We have zero. So let's go get it. And you'll, I'll, I'll show you why you need a smelter momentarily. Let's find a cave. We're going to run off in one direction and hopefully find, you know, some place of interest dropping tethers as we go. Okay, not too far from our house, our base, we found a little cave here. So it's gonna be nice once a work lamp, once you have a work lamp because it kind of brightens things up, but it's doable with the tethers and your, your headlamp um, to sort of see through. So we're gonna collect some compound. Um, oh, you can hear a storm coming. Now, if you're at the surface, the storm can kill you. Um, so if you're at the surface, you'll wanna either get yourself into a cave so you don't get hit by flying debris, or you can enter the uh, the habitat, your base. Oh my gosh, I am out of tethers. No worry, no worries. We'll just create a new batch. Continue on. The goal of this of this little delving into the cave is to find some malachite, which contains iron ore for smelting. I'm sorry, copper ore and. Um, Lazarite. Lazarite, I think it is, which has aluminum orb. Now, when you get into a cave, you'll notice that there are ways of dying now. These plants are all hostile. Well, not all of them, but they, they each have different things that they can do. Um, these yellow things, when you take out your, your terrain tool, I don't know what they're called, dig underneath them and they'll kind of explode into poisonous gas. So for them, you're going to want to keep some distance. Now look, as we round the corner, we found these lovely green spiky things. As you get closer, you'll see it's a resource. So we're gonna wanna actually kill this big, yes, there you go. Kill this big plant and then start mining. This is copper. This is malachite, copper bearing ore. 
And guess what? We found our first art artifact. So as you kill plants and, and the like, you'll see that attached to them are these little orbs of research. They're the, these are what we're going to put in our research chamber and start getting the bites we need to advance in tech. Over here is, um, what's it called? Ammoni ammonium? Yeah, ammonium. You get an audio cue. Well, we're going to just drop it on the floor for now. Uh, that's going to be more useful for later in the game. Um, it's good for trading when you get a trade platform because uh, some of the rare, you can use it. It's, it's fairly common and you can use it to trade for some of the rarer stuff. Um, we could collect some more of this, this iron or this copper, but our goal is to find some. Oh, right here. If you look... Let's see, we took some damage. All right, we're also out of tether, so we're going to create use our last compound to create tethers. Now, you'll notice that I have, um, you'll see these little yellow uh, specks in the ground. You'll also see blue. Yellow is power, blue is oxygen. So you can have a, a unit of oxygen in your tank, so if you are away from your tether, it'll refill your oxygen bar. The power can be brought back to your base and put in any of the storage slots. I'll, you know what, I'll hold on to that and show you how that works. So you can mine the power as well. Uh, but for now, looks like we found some another artifact. This is great. So you wanna make sure you get rid of all the dirt and put it somewhere you'll see. And uh, more importantly, we've got our aluminum. So now we're talking. Let's pick this up. Hopefully we have enough, um, actually hopefully we have enough of the other components to, uh, to make the smelter. I think we might need compound for that, but there were some near the base, so no worries. Now that we've got some copper and we've got some, uh, aluminum ore, we're going to head back to base. But first, I want to show you how we bring back the artifacts. These are, again, what we're going to use for research. Now, you click to hold it in the air, kind of like a gravity gun makes you a little slower but um it's a little clunky but this is how you get them back now when you have two of them you can actually do a little juggling technique so click drag click drag and that's really it um it's a little bit monotonous but you know what it's efficient efficient efficiency is not always the most exciting thing in life unless of course you're me and lo love efficiency um but yeah, you're not me. Luckily for you. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll cut out this run back and I'll meet you back at the base. We're back at the base and we've got our little koosh ball and tennis ball looking thing. And now we're going to throw them in the research chamber and show you how that works. So here we go. Let's throw it in. Open up the panel by holding Q whilst mousing over the control panel. Unlocking and going. You can see we the this actual orb has 2,500 bytes or so that you can research from it. And with the power we are providing to the gener um, the this this module, we're we're getting 133 extracted per minute. Now we can speed that up by either a turning on the small generator. As you can see, that boosts it doubles it boosts us up to 266. But I want to, oops, let's close that panel. I want to actually show you how these power resources, so we we've, we've, we got power out of the ground. You can just throw it on any slot and look, we're now researching at full capacity, 266. Isn't that lovely? All right, so as that goes, you can open up your, um, your little control panel here your t tech panel by holding Q it's quite clunky because if you're like moused over something such as you know the research chamber module it'll open that instead so make sure that you're kind of off in the middle of nowhere and then what we're gonna want is to get that smelter going 500 bytes uh, it's gonna take some time so let's let this research I think what we'll do is collect some we're gonna collect some of the uh, the nearby compound and we'll meet back when we have enough research okay I thought about it we're gonna actually need some resin as well because um, I'm, I believe the smelter uses compound to be printed via the medium fabricator but like I said in the beginning every module needs a platform to sit on in order to be utilized so we're gonna collect some resin 
Um, while we're doing that, our research uh, lab is going. And uh, it's probably at a small, slow, slow pace, but it's going nonetheless. So we'll kind of head back and... Uh, the heck? Okay. <laughs> we'll head back and uh, see where we're at. Actually, it doesn't matter where you are. We can check the... Uh, we can check the research uh, pad, I guess, anywhere. And you'll see we already have the 500 bytes needed to get the smelter. Oops. So now here's another little annoyance that you must note. Sometimes you can't interact with things because your, your terrain tool is out. So let's put it away. Hold Q once again. And now we should be able to click. Yep. There we go. Boom. Smelter unlocked. All right. Now this is where you're going to notice that power becomes an issue. So here we go. Let's pr let's print our large platform. Now you'll see we, we had a nice healthy maybe half power. Like it was a little fatter than this. But once the fabricator started going, we are running at, you know, pretty minimal power. We'll also be able to see that in the research chamber, we're only extracting 66 bytes per minute. Whereas before we were at, I believe, 133 or something along those lines. So it might be useful to get, if we had power, we can put it in or get some more organic material. Let's do that. So I'll just go around and, you know, collect some some of the weeds. Okay, actually, some of that stuff wasn't useful. There we go, organic. All right, you'll see now that when we put away our gun, click it on, everything starts running at a little more efficient pace. And hopefully we can get our smelter going. Now just imagine, now you can imagine you got research going, you have the fabricator going, and then once you have the smelter going, you're going to have quite a bit of power hog. We're going to have qu quite a bit of power being consumed. All right, we're going to move that out of the way because uh, I should mention that if there is something in the way of a fabricator or vehicle bay or whatever it might be, you'll uh, it won't be able to be printed. So here we go, printing the smelter now. We're going to go and unpack the platform and plug it in. Well, I'll just put it here. It doesn't really... It's not really that important. As long as the cable reaches. Oops. I died. Well, don't unpack while... St we, we both learned something here. Don't unpack while standing. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll meet you back at the base <laughs> when we land. Well, that's a little lesson in dying. So if you do die to plants in a cave, you'll uh, lose anything that was in your backpack and your corpse will be marked. So I don't, we're very close, so you won't see, um, but there'll be a little um, kind of beacon in the distance that you can follow. And unfortunately we got crushed by our own platform, our own stupidity, stupidity. So if you click on it, you'll open up your inventory you died with, hit Q and shift click all the items to sort of put them back where they belong. <laughs> RIP little man. Uh, I guess you can run away, break distance, or click off of it. Here we go. Now we've got our lovely smelter created. We're going to unpack it. And now we are moving forward in the world. Okay, I said we're going to need... I said we're going to need a smelter, and now I'll explain why. So, as you see, power becomes an issue. You're going to want to generate more power and you can do so via a small solar panel which costs 400 bytes and a wind turbine which we have also enough bytes f to spend our to spend our points on let's go oh i forgot to mention i had dropped some of my ore when i over here you can eventually research some storage but you know for now for the sake being i'm just tossing it here hoping a storm doesn't come all right, we're going to shift click to pick up items quickly. They go right onto your backpack. And now the smelter. So the smelter always does one ore at a time. It it goes from left to right. So if you if I turn this on, the malachite on the left here will get smelted first. Make sure you every uh, every every module has a different area where you need to interact with. So if you're like highlight highlighting on actually as long as you're highlighted over the physical smelter it'll give you the option hold e to turn it on 
now you can see our power is really struggling so once we get this copper ore done we can get a solar panel up and running i think what we'll do this is probably wise to collect some collect some more organic matter just because while the daylight's burning we want to make sure we can we can uh get a solar panel going so i'm just going to run out here until we get that lovely organic sound don't over rotate and run back home put our gun away boom now we've got power flowing a little bit better it's still not full but you know what it's going to smelt quicker than it w would before um what i also want to show you is how to use the terrain tool to build now right now you only are able to destroy terrain lower it so if you hold alt you can see an up arrow and you hold control you can see uh, a little square kind of for for leveling but we can't seem to do any of that just yet that's because in order to get that functionality you need to create a canister canister is something you need resin for you start with the recipe right off the bat so just like anything else you're creating it's a small item you could create it right from your backpack the thing about tool modifications are they need to reside on the tool in order for them to work so i hit q to open the backpack hold on oops put the tool away and then e to bring out the gun and you'll see there's two slots on the side or one on top top boom now we have the canister mod we can collect some dirt and use the other functions to build. So Alt builds up a phallic looking loveliness. <laughs> but um, yeah, these can be useful, can be useful for uh, getting across gaps and stuff. And you can use the control key to level. And yeah, if you have to get across a big gap, as you imagine, that could be useful. Let's collect a bunch of a uh, bunch more of the terrain so I can show you another little cool trick for if you have to get up somewhere pretty high now generally you'll have plenty of terrain it's just because i just put the canister on um i'm having an issue oh let's make sure we have oxygen i'm gonna run back to the base get that out here okay i don't know why i had to do it here but let's if we let's say we need to get up on some sort of object here if you hold alt you can make a little hill then you want to hold control and, and make sure you're at some sort of angle that is in the direction you want to go in this case up so we're going to hold control and walk hold hold click well we got to hold control and click and walk as this builds and it's slow but a very useful pro process so if you eventually fall in a hole <laughs> with a vehicle or something and you need to get out this is a nice clever way to get a, a slope this one's fairly gentle but as as you can imagine the, s the steeper you go um, the quicker you'll elevate yourself. So yeah, that that might be a better, you know, it's not too steep and you can still get up. That might be more useful, but it's very cool. All right, so while that was happening, we've smelted our first set of copper and some aluminum. Yep, just spits it out on the floor. I think if you've had, you have storage modules here, it'll go right into the storage, but for now, it's rude and just throws it on the floor. So what we'll do is we'll create our small wind turbine using the one aluminum that way we can, right now the sun isn't out so a solar panel isn't very useful uh we can put it anywhere we can put it right on the side here of the uh habitat it's just as useful as putting it on one of these storage slots on the side of platforms either way it'll generate power right now the solar panel won't be helping but you know this will all be useful as you move on so from there, you've got the basics. I think the uh, your next step, obviously, will be to explore more of the caves, get it collecting resources, start kind of experimenting with uh, you know some of the research things. You know, they aren't very explicit what they do, but this game is about exploring and and learning. So this it's a little out of the scope of this video. Um, but, you know, I plan on getting maybe some additional videos in the future that might explain or detail uh, some of the advanced things in this game. But this should get you started. Um, yeah, I, I think this should get you started and, you know, 
get you on, well on your way. It, it's not that overwhelming. At first it could seem daunting, but it's a very easy game. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Yeah, you comment, subscribe, comment that you subscribed, um, and tell your mom that S. Monty Gaming taught you how to play Astroneer because she'll appreciate that. She'll very much, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, thanks for sticking around, guys. I will see you in future videos, hopefully. Take care.